until I get you thinking on what you're not doing, okay? Uh, and I, I find with, with myself, the things that I tend to do are the things that grab my attention. Um, and oftentimes that's not the best thing, all right? So he's gonna talk about mastering your time so that you don't get sucked in with the time wasters. Joe's in, in, he's dressed in black, but he's got a lot of great uh, pearls of wisdom that he's going to share. Joe Peachy, Peachy, and Peachy. Good morning. I'm not going to talk about Joe. You want to know about me, you can go on my LinkedIn profile. This is more about you. I, how many people here have ever made a bad decision? How many people here have ever struggled with a decision? For most of my life, I made bad decisions because I'm Italian. And Italians make gut decisions. They didn't say gut right decisions. So I had to create a system that 100% of my decision making, I could make it right now. And if I made the wrong decision, I knew immediately instead of $100,000 later. Have you ever made a decision that cost you money? Have you ever made a decision that cost you time? So I have a system here you may or may not want to use, but there's pieces of it. And, and we're going to end with time management. I don't think you can manage time if you don't manage priorities. All the time management books out there, they talk about managing time. You cannot, there's three things you do with time. You waste it, you spend it, you invest it. But we're not going to get to time management until we get to priority management. So with that, I'm going to show you the model I had to come up with. I'm going to teach you the model and then you can use it. <clears throat> when we talk about the top box and we talk about purpose, I'm not talking about saving the whales. I'm not talking about becoming a better person. I'm talking about your purpose. There's about 10 facets of your life you have purpose. You have your physical, your spiritual, your, there's a million, business, career. We have college students here. I wish somebody would have taught me this when I was in college. If I could have learned this when I was in college, I promise you, within five years of graduating college, I'd have been a millionaire, okay? Because I would have not made bad decisions. Because every day you make choices and decisions, is that true? Okay. And good choices and good decisions create what? Good actions. Bad choices, bad decisions create what? Bad actions. So let's get to the top. Today we're gonna to talk about your business, or for you college students, your careers for your purpose. Now we're talking about clarity. Clarity is the most overstated coaching term in the universe. Everybody's a clarity coach. Got it? Yet they don't have it. This is my version of clarity. And I, this is a Joeism, which means you may not agree and you're allowed not to agree. When I, I leave and you say, Jeff, that guy, don't ever bring that guy back because I disagree with everything he says. That's okay. Clarity is a combination of three things. What is it that you want as an end result? When do you want it and why do you want it? And that sounds really, really good. I'm, I'm telling you something. I travel this country. I'm in thousands of companies. I sit with individuals. Uh, every conceivable size company from the National Football League to Wells Fargo to Joe's Bar and Grill. And 98% of the companies in America and individuals lack clarity. They don't have a central decision-making process. They don't know what they want as an end result. So if you were to decide right now what you wanted as an end result and you had to quantify it. See, that's the other part people don't like to do. They don't like to put a number on anything. They want to say something like, I want to be successful. What does that mean? You're all successful. You got up this morning. I was talking to somebody in the back, and we showed up, right? That's 50% of the game, Hell yeah. right? I mean, I was sitting out in that parking lot at 6 o'clock. Why? I run early. It's just the way I am. I can't help it. My wife has been trying to change that forever. We've been together 47 years. It ain't happening. What is it that you want as an end result? And if you better put your stake in the ground. Now you have to determine when. Because if you don't establish timelines and deadlines to everything, it just doesn't get done. You know, I was getting ready to coach a client, 
And he said, someday, and I said, wrong guy. I'm not the guy to work with. Why? Someday's not on my calendar. <laughs> if we can't fix a date, how do we measure? And then the hardest thing you'll ever decide in life is why. Why? Why is it that you want the end result? Now, here's what I'm going to tell you. How many people in here are traction people? Good. You call them rocks. I call them non-negotiables. In my business, I have non-negotiables. Every one of you have non-negotiables. These are things you cannot not do. And yet, it's been my experience, and again, this is a Joeism. 95% of people in America, the first thing they'll negotiate with are their non-negotiables. I'm Italian. I had to give up pizza years ago. Why? I'll be fatter than I am. It's a non-negotiable. What are your non-negotiables? Now, I will tell you, if you write down your non-negotiables and, listen, here's the key, and you negotiate with it, then check your why. Because it's really not real. It's not real. You know, when Dawn and I launched Peachy and Peachy, I said, we are gonna be the best sales training company in America. She said, Joe, Give yourself some slack here. I said, John, this is what we want to make. This is when we want to make it. And this is why we want to make it. Now, outside of integrity, we will not breach integrity. Nothing's off the table. Nothing's off the table. That means we're not going to negotiate. So right now, as an exercise, can you answer those three questions? And here's some, if you just write something down, and it's not real, You'll negotiate before you get out of the parking lot. It's amazing to me. You know, Daryl is my favorite client. Valentry is my favorite client. I work with companies all over the world. And I've watched him create a standard of, he and I call them rocks, I call them non-negotiables, and it's amazing what accountability does in a company. And I'm going to tell you something else. Again, I'm in, I'm in so many companies. I, uh, and people don't want to hold people accountable. I, I was with a guy the other day, and he goes, but my people won't do that. I said, who writes the check? When did, they, when did the employees determine what gets done in a company? Do they know where you want to go? Do they know when you want to get there? Do they know why? Did you bring them in? Do they have buy-in? A coaching client who played in the National Football League was on the phone with me yesterday, and he brought his nephew to our sales train. And he calls me up, he goes, Joe, how can I get my nephew to be more fast-paced? I said, you weren't listening. You've been in my training three times. I feel like a failure. You can't fix other people. You have a decision to make. Can you work with them or not? Is he doing the non-negotiables? Is, do is what he's doing going to get you where you want to go? If not, you have a decision to make. But let's talk about us personally. Let's talk about when Joe gets up in the morning at 3.30. I'm insane. I am. I'm nuts. I I love what I do, so it's really not work. But I have my list of non-negotiables. Every decision, if you said, Joe, I have an event, could you speak at it? I would say, what does Joe want? When does he want it? Why does he want it? Is this the best use of his time towards his objective? Have you asked yourself that question when people ask you to do things? <clears throat> How many people here, when people ask you to do things, you struggle saying no? You know, both good to great. A lot of good companies out there that never be great because they say yes too good. I read a book many years ago, you can't steal second with your foot on first. My favorite word is no. But that's my behavior style. It's easy for me to say no because it's my behavior style. My wife's behavior style doesn't allow her to say no. Got it? Now we know that. So I had to teach her my system. She hates it. Because this system will force you to say no. If, 
the top box is clear. Now once you have the top box, I will tell you this, you do not need a coach until you fill out the top box. Listen, coaches can't give you the top box. But you waste a lot of time and money hiring coaches and consultants if you can't fill that top box. <coughs> Because how are they going to help you to get somewhere? You know, a guy from Chicago, he says, Joe, will you help me do goal setting? No. First, we have to have it in the mind. We have, to, we have to get your total clarity. Before we do that, if we don't have that in place, what are we setting goals toward? Because number two is your plan of action, your objectives, your goals, your benchmarks that have to be quantifiable. Everything you do has to be quantifiable. If you can't quantify it, you can't achieve it, you can't do it. How do you measure it? Carol's got a guy in his business. He, I call him Mr. Data. <clears throat> this guy measures everything. Do you absolutely know what you should be measuring in your business? Are you measuring the most important non-negotiables? In what I do, <laughs> speaking, coaching, training, consulting, whatever they call us, the majority of people who do what I do are broke. Because they're good in front of the people, but they don't know how to get in front of the people to get paid, right? So I've broken down my non-negotiables very sim simply. Generate leads, pick up the phone to get appointments, and do quality course stories to sell. This is the ice cream. But you better believe, those three things right there, Joe Peachy has to hold himself accountable to. The most important whiteboard in my whole office. My whiteboard has no aesthetic value, Tim. There's no pictures of me with Zig. Uh, there's a whiteboard, and the most important whiteboard in my whole office is right in front of my desk, right over the top of my computer. I call it my core storyboard. When I do a quality presentation to start selling, the name goes up there. And I know how much I'm going to make annually based on how many of those you do. Are you measuring? Because now we get the plan of action. Now we get the actual, the plan of action. Does the plan of action take you to the end result? We, this past December, I told Dawn, we want to triple our income. I looked at our business model and I said, but we can't get there doing it the way we're doing it. Now we have to adjust our plan of action. But if we didn't have the top box in place, where are we gonna go? So it doesn't matter if it's what I put in my mouth, what comes out of my mouth. It doesn't matter if I get on my stationary bike in the morning. It doesn't matter if I'm, I'm deciding should I train for that company or that company. I'm gonna throw them on this board. So your plan of action, your and that's where coaches can help you. They can help you develop a plan of action, but can they help you find what you want? No. Now, the action, the actual rocks, the day-to-day -day dailies. What is it that I have to do on Monday? This is your action. This is execution, and quite frankly, without execution, you don't get paid. The action, the specific activities, is what you get paid for. The top box is the engine. It's the gas. The middle box is structure. But the dailies? I make 150 outbound calls a week. <laughs> Why? Those are activities. They're non-negotiables. I have to generate leads. Now, let's go back up to plan of action. Every year I assess, we have 17 ways we generate leads. Why? 16's not enough. <laughs> we look at every silo of lead generation in a plan of action. We whiteboard our whole business. And I say to my wife, we got no business from that, get rid of it. You know, I'm, get, I'm old. I don't have time. I'm closer to the end zone than some of you guys. One false move. Now let me show you something else on this board up here. I don't pretend to be a polished speaker. 
I left the keynote stage years ago to become the best trainer there was. Now I'm back in the keynote stage, but I have a different approach to life, which is if you guys don't get something out of this, I'm not here to pump you up. Did you got it? Because pump up lasts until the parking lot. So here's, here's where you are. Here's where you are, and here's where you want to go, the apex. When I was a football coach, I used to think if I took a lateral move, it would make me more saleable to this. You know what I learned about lateral moves? For you college students, if you ever had geometry, that takes you further away from the apex. A lateral move is lateral. Now, it only took me 40 years to learn. <laughs> now, I'm a slow learner. You understand? I never said I was brilliant. My SAT score is lower than everybody, but my MQ is pretty high. Okay? I have to overcome with great skill mastery. So, what I learned and what we do at Peachy Peachy, every move we make is to the apex. Joe, can you serve on this board? No. I'm polite. I've learned to be polite. Like Dawn and I became master trainers of this. Really, for me, I had to have a behavioral adjustment. Okay, because I used to offend everybody. Now I only offend a few people. But I say, Joe, is serving on that board the best use of your time toward your objective? No. You know, thank you very much for the honor. I'm not going to be able to do that. When I started learning that process, 2008, I want you to think back to 2008. How many people remember how bad it was then? And Dawn and I are sitting at this big famous speakers convention, and they're all whining. And I say, they're all famous guys. They're walking around. Oh, man. Phone stopped ringing. Speaker school ain't. Speaker bureaus ain't working anymore. I looked at Dawn. We need to go home. It was at the Coronado Springs. This is a waste of my time. We're tripling our income in the worst economy in our life. We need to find out what we're doing. What I realized we were doing was we were not negotiating with the non-negotiables. That's all. I want you to, I want you to Google this. Uh, don't do it now. <laughs> iPhones. <laughs> I had a flip phone seven months ago. Now I'm doing podcasting. There's a whole talk in that deal. Anyway, the common denominator of success. It is a powerful article that was written in the 40s that is every, every bit is crucial today. And what we realized when we read the article is we were doing the top four things that they talked about by mistake. So now, when you get to activities, are you and your business teams are they executing any activities? They need to be executing it. What's the article you need to tell us? The Common Denominator of Success. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Great article. And when you get through the, the part that says, well, we do they, they top, top income earners in a country and the top thousand, they all said the same thing, but we do things that other people won't do. Well, yeah, behind that, what do we really do? I mean, what do you really do? And when I realized the four things they talked about, <coughs> the four things were what we were doing. And that's how we triple our income. I'm certainly not the most polished guy in the world. I mean, I train to speak every day, but I'm not about polish. I'm certainly not the prettiest. I wear black. It really works when you go to the airport. People leave you alone. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Eric, I told Eric when he came in, I said, you know, I've got clients that say, you need to spend time around Eric because he's funnier than you. I said, what do you mean he's funnier than you? Well, he's funny. He's nice to be around. We just work with you, but he's fun. I'm not a fun guy. My wife and I go speak somewhere. We got this big client, seven years in Tampa, big franchise, rent to own the R&R &R wheels and the tires. And we spoke at their national convention. But I do sales training, I do collections training, I do management training. And every time I walk in, they go, where's Dawn? <laughs> She's so much fun. Like you, you're fun. I can tell. Look at that smile. <laughs> so 
So what are your assets? <coughs> what are they? Think about it. Are you negotiating? Are you allowing your team to negotiate with them? Are you allowing, are you allowing things, you know, at the end of the day, guys, it's your name. It's just like when I give referrals. How many people like referrals? How many people ever wish you didn't give one? I had to have a system for that. Because you guys are CEOs. You're killing yourselves to build a brand. And one bad referral can kill it. So I decided I had to create a system to vet people on whether I'd, I'd give a referral. Because you give a bad referral, you spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on your brand, and you just lost a lot of money. Are you thinking that way? Are, are you thinking about everything you do? Everything, write this down, everything you do should have specific intent. You see, that's what creates focus, is having a clear direction a great plan of action, your benchmark objectives that you're going to measure, that's what creates focus. And so somebody calls you up and they go, hey, we got this really cool thing. And like I get asked four times a year to go out on these speaker cruises. They're always asking me. And I always say no. And I, I'm polite, hopefully. It's not in my business model. It's not part of my business plan. But it would be so much fun to say anything else but that. Oh, then Dawn would love it. And I'm thinking, you take me away from the phone for four days? There's not, I had a guy who asked me to go to Australia to speak. And it would have been good. And I said, well, I need travel time. And I needed this up, and he goes, we don't pay like that. We don't pay travel time. I said, look, you don't have to have me in. You take Joe Peachy off the phone for four days. I have to think about what that's costing me. <laughs> he goes, do you do everything with intent? I have to. I'm not a Phi Beta Kappa, guys. I, I, you know, Dawn and I were not dropping. We didn't have rich uncles. We had to build our business from ground zero. We couldn't have gaps. I believe everybody should have to bootstrap. I believe everybody should have to create cash flow before investment. I believe everybody should have to pay their own way. I believe everybody, you know, my dad, my dad's generation, when they got out of school, they went to the army for two years. I believe everybody, when they graduate high school, should go into one year of commission sales. Just one. And they'll never have to ask their parents for money again. And they'll be successful in business. Very successful in business. Now, now that you have your model, you've got your model, which is when you have, now, you see how important the top box is now? If you don't have that, you have no model. Every day I visit priority management. I wake up to it. I go to bed to it every day. I mean, sit in that parking lot at 6 o'clock, somebody called me up and said, Joe, can you? Joe, would you? I'm sorry, I'd like to. Now I actually have people say to me, Joe, does this fit into your priority management? <laughs> so let's move on. <clears throat> These are all the facets of your life. Okay, the purpose, your professional, your physical, your spiritual, education. Now, the other reason I'm showing you is that sometimes they will conflict. Right? I mean, sometimes you'll have a family issue conflict with a business issue. How many people have had that happen? Joe, how do you make those decisions? Well, we had to have a meeting. <laughs> because my wife is people-oriented, and I'm task-oriented, which means I believe task completion has a higher priority than relationship building. Are, are you with me? Now, the problem with that is when Dawn and I were broke, absolutely, we were $350,000 in medical debt, and we got into a part-time direct sales business, 
And so I'm working 100 hours a week at my job, and I'm building this thing at night. And so she would say things like, you know, the kids really need to see you. Was she right? Yeah. And I would say things like, I'm killing myself. I'm out here working 20 hours a day, seven days a week, so our kids will never be in financial bondage. You see how my process and priorities were task, her were people. Were we both right? Yes. Which means we had to have a meeting about this. Which takes priority and when? So, there's a wedding that Dawn would like to go to. And there's an opportunity for me to <coughs> sell. I didn't say execute. Dawn, where do we want to go? What do we want to accomplish? What do we want to accomplish? When do we want that to happen? Why? Now, Dawn, what's the best use of my time towards that? She said, you need to go sell. I'll go to the wedding. I'm not a vacation guy. My grandson told me yesterday, you hate vacations, don't you? So we had to come up with an agreement. So I take my wife, I put her on the beach. She goes out there and gets fried. And I sit in the hotel room and I do this. We're both happy. We're happy. We've been together 47 years. We have no marital problems. We had a priority problem at one time. This fixed it. I'm going to tell you something else. By thinking this way, when my daughter got Lyme disease that was uncurable, it took $500,000 out of our pocket and we didn't go into debt. Why? Because decisions I made before were on here. Does that make sense? So I don't care how successful you are, but do you know things happen? Do you know things happen? I mean, if you lost your biggest client today, how does it affect you? See, my priority management system says this, 100% of my clients quit me every day. That's a crazy place to go. Oh no, it keeps me working. I remember losing a $90,000 client. I remember. But six months before, I had mentally and emotionally prepared, got my priority management system, and when they left, I had one come in. Okay, now some of you think this is absolutely insanity. And that's okay. You don't have to use it at the intensity I use it. But boy, the model really saves you from bad decisions. And if you make the wrong decision, some of us will still make the wrong decision, but you will know it as you're making the decision. Here's what you're gonna say. I know I'm violating my priority management system and I'm gonna live with it. You wanna read a good book, Leadership and Self-Deception by the Arbiter Institute. It'll teach you why people lie to themselves. And if you lie to yourself, you lie to other people. It's not a lie. Is that true? Yeah? Now, we're going to do some time management. Take out a piece of paper. I'm going to give you 20 keys of time management. Now that we've learned to manage priorities, right? Now you get priorities straight. Let's talk about time. Now it's time to, as they say in the South, hunker down. Now it's time to go vertical. Now I know my priorities. Now it's time to get very efficient with my time. Because you know what? You can't have the last second. You want to know I didn't stand up here and introduce myself and tell you about accolades and all that? Because I'm not going to waste your time. Why? You can't have it back. You cannot have a minute to go back. You can make money. You can't make time. In my behavior style, time is more important than money. Okay, so I respect your time. Now let's see how much we respect time. Number one, number one, we just taught you how to create clarity. So the first thing in creating time management is to create your clarity. What you want, when you want it, and just take notes on one of the back sheets here. So that's number one. Number two, write down your plan of action and your objectives and make sure they're quantifiable. So now it's going to be end result, clarity, and now we're going to step into, let's write down our, our plan of action. 
Do you have your plan of action written down? Do you have your goals written down? I, you know, a person said to me today, I hate writing my goals down because I feel like a failure. Missing a goal is not a failure because most people don't run for them. This is another Joeism. I believe it's easier to make money today than ever in the history of men. It has nothing to do with who's in the White House either. I'm talking about in our lifespan. Why? Because there's so much average and there's so many people that don't know how to play right. They're, they don't work hard. They close their businesses at 5 o'clock. They're off for the weekend. I, I grew up in the North. That's where they created blue laws. <laughs> I grew up in a construction family. From the time I was five years old, my father would push his foot against my back, get in the truck. People don't work hard. That's a competitive edge. I mean, you want to gain an unfair advantage over your competition, don't you? One way is to work hard. The guy said to me yesterday, he goes, Joe, it must be great owning your own business. What do you do on the weekend? I said, you know, you get to choose the 20 hours a day you work. Entrepreneurs are the only people that will work 80 hours so they don't have to work 40. <laughs> and look, I'm not an entrepreneur. I'm a business owner. I'm going to tell you the difference between an entrepreneur and a business owner. I will never call myself an entrepreneur because my business is not scaled. If your business doesn't scale, it is not. You're not an entrepreneur. When I sign a contract, they point at me and they go, you're coming in here, right? Don't send me one of those other guys. It's you or nobody. That means I built a great mousetrap. So don't make a mistake. If it can't be sold and it can't work without you, you're not an entrepreneur. I'm not. I just know that. Is this too strong? <coughs> right? I, I just have a different style, you know what I'm saying? Number three. Develop your concrete plan of action. It has to line up with the end game. <laughs> Guys, I have a flip phone. A flip phone. I have an iPhone. You want to know why? Because I hired Daryl's company to do digital marketing for me. I didn't even know what digital marketing was. <laughs> and then my son comes in and says, Dad, I have a way you can scale. My son does production. He goes, you need to do podcasting. I still had a flip phone. I said, can I do it on this? <laughs> no, Dad. <laughs> he said, it will explode your brand. He said, it will take, but don't do it unless you're committed to it. Because 95% of podcasters stop podcasting after four months. <clears throat> now I'm sitting. Somebody says, where is your podcast studio? It's my walk-in closet. <laughs> because it has clothes all around. I sit down, I talk, my son picks up this little thing, and I'll, I'll tell you, it's Sales Edge. If you want free sales tips every Tuesday and Thursday, it's Sales Edge, it's on iTunes. Next, develop a to-do list. You know few people have to-do lists anymore? You know what they do? They have reminders on their phone. You know, that class in science in, in college that I kept cutting, <laughs> I took that class three times because I, I couldn't figure out that if you don't go to class, they fail you. <laughs> but I remember the one thing is they would ring a bell and a mouse would eat. We've become a reactive society. Bells ring, we perform. To-do lists are proactive. Reminders are reactive. Just by being proactive, you have a competitive edge. You know what else? How many people ever heard, I want to sleep on it? And we laugh. Psychologists and science have proven your subconscious never sleeps. I do my to-do list for tomorrow, today, so my brain can work on it all night, because it does. So do a to-do list. And when you complete something, check it off. It's important. We're number five. Once you have that to-do list, prioritize them top to bottom. Most important to least important. Most important to least important. Now, there's five things you can do with your to-do list. You ready? I must do. This is your top. I have to do it. 
These are your rocks. These are your non-negotiables. Put those on the top. The next one, I should do. I should get this done. I should get that training manual done. Number three, I'd like to do it. This might be, I'd like to have lunch with somebody to build a stronger relationship. Is it important? Yeah. Is it top priority? No. And people spend more time in those type meetings than in real meetings. Number four, delegated. I want you to write down somewhere that nobody else can see. What is your hourly rate worth? If you were charging for somebody to learn something from you, what would you charge them for an hour? And how many activities are you doing below that rate? How many activities are you performing that's below your rate that you could pay somebody else to do so you could stay in your top, top priorities? Next one, eliminate it. There's some things on your to-do list that don't belong there. They have no effect. All right, number six, establish timelines on everything. Everything I do has a timeline. Now, for my behavior style, you can say deadline. But for most behavior styles, you better say timeline. <laughs> because deadline causes pressure for people. Timelines is so much softer, right? So when I talk to my wife, I say, can we get a timeline on that? What's going on behind my eyeballs is we need this drop dead date done now. But I don't do that. That's why we've been together for 47 years. <laughs> what number am I on? Seven. Create a sense of urgency. Do it now. Do it now. Put off putting off. That was a good one. I just made that up. Put off putting off. Somebody write that down and send it to me. I might use that. All right, number eight. Focus on one thing at a time when you can. Handle things once. Do you know they've done a study that say if you're working on something and you put it down, do something else to go back to it, 500% more time to get it done. <clears throat> How many times have you been working on something and you decide to turn on your email because that's the way we live anymore. We're reactive. Like our email runs our life. We've turned into, I, I wonder sometimes what people do when they're always posting stuff all day long. <laughs> now I know they have things like Hootsuite and, and, and software that can post it for you, but some people, it's like, I'm in the shower. Who gives a rip? <laughs> You're thinking what I'm thinking, you just won't say it. <laughs> I've met you, you're a blind Scott. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Master delegation. How many people have, have, have to delegate? Here's four rules of delegation. Number one, write down your expectations of the actions for the person doing it. So know what you expect, to, the expectations. Number two. Make sure you choose a capable person. That's a big one. They were just talking about that in the intern thing. Intern. Number three, establish completion dates. And number four, and nobody likes this one, inspect progress. You mean micromanage? I didn't say that. You manage a project, you lead people. You hear what I said? You manage the project, you lead people, but you better inspect what you expect, or it won't get done. Number, oh, how many people have meetings? Meetings, you do meetings, which is like 50% of your lifetime. All right, so let's talk about some steps in having meetings. Number one, state the purpose of the meeting in the beginning. Number two, have an agenda. Number three, most important issues on top. And number four, start on time, end on time, and never hold up a meeting for late people. <laughs> when I was a football coach, I remember my office, I was coaching defensive backs and special teams, was the last 
the last office in the building. I had my own set of steps. So when I would meet, one minute before I met, I locked the door. Any players who were late met me at 4 o'clock the next morning. It didn't take long. We hold up meetings. For what? You condition people to come late. It's okay? You learned anything yet? Yeah? You make sure you give me your, um, your name and stuff and I'll send you a book. Right, it's called Sell Naked on the Phone. <laughs> there are no pictures. All right, number 11. Number 11. Limit interruptions. Don't allow your technology to interrupt you. Look, I do ride along with salespeople, and I tell them when we walk out to the car, I fire you so fast. What? They got their light going on on their phone. Like, what have we become? If I have a meeting with you, that's it. You get, I, I don't care about technology. Bells go off all day long, ring, and we go, don't allow technology to interrupt you. And have a policy at some time when your door is closed, you don't get interrupted. Oh, open door policies are wonderful, but at some point in time, you got stuff to get done. Number 13. Number 12. <laughs> Define your most important results in your action plan. Right now, buddy, I'm going to tell you what. I am so focused on daily, weekly, monthly, yearly results in my action plan because if they're not coming, we need to change something. You don't want to wait six months to find out you were doing the wrong thing, right? Number, now we have 13? Yeah. yeah. Try to group tasks together whenever you can. Like let's say uh, you have phone calls to make, try to group them. Proposals to get, try to prove, because it creates momentum. In our business, we never develop material during business hours. <laughs> That's done in after hours. Okay. Even though it's important. Next, organize your workspace. Whoa. Oh. My wife says she doesn't have files, she has piles. I can't see that, but I know I got my 10 minutes. I'm good. <laughs> Make sure you clean your desk. It's been proven if you have an organized workspace, you're more productive. And 98% of the executives say they will not promote a messy person. I didn't say it. They won't promote a messy person. So if you go into the corporate world, if you have a messy desk, you're probably going to sit at that same desk. You see why I wish somebody would have got my, my attention when I was your age about this stuff? All right. Create chunks of time for big projects. You got a big project? That's going to be a 60 to 120 minutes. Create a chunk of time to get it done without distraction. Now we're on 16. Create personal growth time. You're already doing that. Speaking to the choir. However, just so when people tell you that work for you, they don't have time for personal growth, let me give you some statistics. 12 to 25,000 miles a year are driven by most people. Do you realize you're in a car, those people are in a car for 1,000 hours, two semesters of school, what are they listening to? You know? Next, the average person, four times 40 hours on coffee and cigarette breaks. And six weeks of your, li your life is on lunch. I get on airplanes and I always want to see what people are doing. And I stand up and I think they're reading. No, they're playing solitaire. Solitaire? You, have, you know, please don't say this to me. Just killing time. You might as well put a fork in my eye. <laughs> killing time. Now, be punctual. 5% of the people in the world are on time all the time. That means 
You beat 95% of your competitors by being on time. You're always looking for a competitive edge. I just gave you one. And people who are late are viewed as unreliable. There's no competition out there, guys. Joe and Don Peachy have no right to be ranked number three in the world in training, got it, in speaking. We spend nothing on advertising. Number one and two spend a million dollars a month on LinkedIn ads alone. The things I'm showing you here have helped us grow a brand and it's really common sense, but it's not common anymore. Number 18, concentrate on communicating. Whatever the model you want to use, disc, animals, colors, Myers Briggs, I don't care, whatever it is. Learn it, become it, and execute it every day, even with the taxi cab driver. Number 19, systemize your process. And number 20, and my favorite, learn to say no. All right, last thing we're going to do, here we go. Here's a model. Draw it up. Remember? Oh. We'll go back. Do you see these two boxes right here? Choices and decisions, right? Choices and decisions in those two horizontal boxes. Didn't we say in the beginning, every day you make choices and decisions? Your choices and decisions lead to actions. Your actions lead to results. And in the 21st century, the only thing we get paid for is results. Your results deliver your culture. If I say culture, what do you say? What does it mean? This is interactive, right? Environment. Sorry, that was sarcastic. I apologize. <laughs> what does culture mean to you? Environment. Environment. Very good. What else? Brand. What was that? Brand. Okay. Here's what culture is, because we only have four minutes. I want to get this done. Culture is how your clients view you. Your culture is how your clients view you. How your clients view you, that's the culture you've established. Now, if you know that, what goes in the bottom box? What gives you good decisions and choices? One word, how you think. What you read, what you listen to, who you hang out with. And if you spend a dime in training, coaching, if you ever hire a coach, I'm going to give you three words on how not to make a, a bad decision, including me. Fresh fruit check. Is the person I am paying for information, do they know more about the topic than me? Are they doing it now, and are they winning? That's why there are so many free seminars in Orlando. You still should vet the speakers like you're paying them 10 grand. Last thing, take out your iPhones. I'm gonna give you two free downloads. Two free downloads. Do you have an iPhone? Good, take it out. Does it work on Android? It will work. <laughs> you asked the wrong guy. I had to say yes. But it was, I want you to type in 55678. This is what's gonna happen. And when you get to the tag, the message, I want you to write one word, sales edge. Now, if it's an iPhone, it's going to break the word off, so put quotes on each side of it. So if it's an iPhone, sales edge, but put quotes, and it'll make it one word. If it's an Android, it'll make it one word. So you put the, the you're going to send it to there, and you're going to write in sales edge. And then hit send, and it's going to take you to a link. When you hit that link, it's going to take you to a landing page. There are free ebooks. One is about LinkedIn. Okay, there's two. But the other thing is, if you scroll further down, you can go into our free podcast and subscribe to the free podcast, which is called Sales Edge. Does everybody have that? Are you getting it? The last thing I'll say is this, and then we're done. And, oh, enjoy those downloads, enjoy the podcast, but more than anything, if you execute a portion of what you got today, you're going to be more efficient, more effective, 
And if any of you ever want to grab a cup of coffee with me, I call it a free cup of Joe. Okay, my phone number is 407-947-2590. If you want to check us out, okay, you can go right to our website, which is peachyandpeachy.com, P-I-C-I, A-N-D-P-I-C-I, -I -I. right? Most importantly, go to my LinkedIn profile. How many people are on LinkedIn? Please send me an invite. Let's just link together. And hopefully, thank you for inviting me, Jeffrey. Yep. And hopefully this had value for you. Thank you.